Good evening, and welcome to Let's Talk Shop with Russ. I've got it. <laughs> Did y'all know I got it locked on? Shane and Shelly is locked on, y'all. <laughs> so, anyway, I had it locked on them. We were talking before the show about um, Corel Video Studio Pro and uh, Corel Draw, and so they were downloading Inkscape, so I had it locked on them. But anyway, welcome to Let's Talk Shop with Russ. Uh, another night we're going to do talk about Corel uh, Draw X7 and working with. Uh, uh, words and letters. Have to get my thought train here because they they threw me off by being on the show first. <laughs> so anyway, but um, hope we have a good time tonight. And the reason I'm carrying this on to the second uh, episode uh, is because of just I've had so many people after the first episode. I'd got a lot of e emails, but after the um, last week's show. Uh, within 24 hours, I had about 40 emails of people saying, hey, do another one, do another one, asking me. So I went like, all right, it seems kind of popular. And we got a good response uh, from everybody doing it. So um, decided to carry it on one more time. And then we'll get back to some woodworking, I promise. So that being said, let's. Uh, the only announcements I really have is don't forget about the website giveaway. That's coming in on the... Uh, it, from now until July 23rd, July 23rd is the ending date at 11.59 p.m. If you want to know the rules and how to enter to get a free website, about a $3,500 worth of uh, value, go to simplywoodencreations.com. On the menu, uh, menu bar, go over to um, contest. A little drop box will open up. You'll see giveaway and all the instructions on how to enter is in there. Basically, you send me an email to russ at simplywoodencreations.com. Uh, dot com. You must follow me on YouTube, uh, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and also um, the Vobel Technologies is my one of my sponsors, and they're actually the ones that's doing the website giveaway through me. Uh, you must like them on Facebook, and I believe it's Instagram, one of the two, but all that information is over there on my website. So go visit that, and you could win a free website. Guys, this is really something very big, so if you haven't entered or it's um, it doesn't take much to create an Instagram account or a Twitter account so that you can follow me on those. So most of y'all still have uh, Facebook accounts and you're on YouTube anyway. So I would suggest that you get it, get off your behinds and do it. So <laughs> just do it. I think there was a somebody that uh, some company that used that. Just do it. So Pepsi. Uh, <laughs> Pepsi. Okay. <laughs> Uh, the other thing is my sponsors, Devobal Technologies. They for web design, development, and hosting. Visit devobal.com. Those guys did a fantastic, wonderful job on my website, and I can't thank those or praise them enough for that. Olivewood 2000 for beautiful, elegant Holy Land Olivewood. Go check out Olivewood 2000 on eBay, and also FastCap for innovation, innovative products for the professional woodworker. Go to fastcap.com. Now that we got that all out of the way, um, we'll get anybody uh, on the panel. I know after this, sh after my show, Dave's show comes on, uh, which is um, uh, talk. To, what is talk CNC with Dave? I forgot now. I, go ahead, Dave. CNC with Dave. There you go. <laughs> Man, my mind is going crazy tonight. Uh, you so sure that ain't break a bit with Dave? Who you got on your show tonight, Dave? Uh, Mr. Carmichael. Mr. Carmichael, great, great. Yeah, that's good. Should be a good show. I like. Yep. Yeah, I had him on he's, the show, and I really liked him. Yeah, he's 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 a good guy. All right, guys, all over everybody over there. Melanie, uh, Maid, Tommy G Workshops over there. Donna Presley. Uh, uh some new people over there. Uh, Chris Getsu. I can't. I ain't got my glasses on, so it's hard for me to see what that... How Chris Dutsko, he's the wood tinkerer. Okay. He's over there. Thanks, guys, for watching. Appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Let's go down the row, uh, row and have everybody introduce yourself. Let's start on my right. Uh, Tommy, introduce yourself and tell us where we can find you. 
Yeah, I'm Tommy Gonzalez at Tommy G Workshop. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, and YouTube all under Tommy G Workshop, and my website, TommyGWorkshop.com. Great, and then Shane and Shelly? Hi, everybody. Know what mom knows here, and here's my lovely husband, very handsome. Hi, I'm Shane. I'm with uh, Shane Topic Shop. You can find me on all your Instagram, social media, Facebook, Twitter, all of that, under Shane's Hobby Shop. And also, tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, go to the Summer's uh, Woodworking Show, and I'll be building something live on camera there just for you. Summer's Woodworking Show. Cool. If I'm available, I'll try to be there. Yeah, uh, Russ, Russ Meadows. Yeah, hey everybody. Uh, Russ Meadows here. You can find me on Facebook under that name. Also, my Facebook page, Rusty Nails Woodshop. That's also on Instagram. The same thing. Great. And then Michael, Michael Chipser. Hey, what's going on, guys? Good job, Russ. You pr pronounced it the correct this time. Excellent. <laughs> um, you can, guys can find me on Facebook. On wood chips and on YouTube on wood chips as well. And then Mr. Donald, Donald Matthews. Been practicing his name all week long, ain't you? <laughs> I'm Donald Matthews. My YouTube channel is Donald Vlog Supplies Woodshop. My Instagram and Twitter are all there, and my website is RedneckKnowHow.com. Cool. I was just going to say, if anybody can mess up a pronunciation of a name, it is me. Trust me. So oh, I, mean, it, I can mess up. I can get the, the name and, and the people completely mixed up. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> and then Mr. Dave, Dave Gatton. Thank you, Russ. Uh, my name is Dave Gatton. You can find me on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all under Dave Gatton. Thanks for having me on, Russ. You are welcome. Um, let me do something over here real quick I need to do. Sorry about that. Just get, take me a second. Must be my mouse on this computer. I'm having a lot of problems with it lately. And I don't know why. So, all right. Let's get in straight into it because we've got a lot to cover tonight and a very short period of time. And so I'm going to screen share if I can remember how to do this. Entire screen. And we should be, y'all should be able to see my screen with Quarrel Draw. Right. Good. All right. So tonight we're going to go, it's going to go kind of fast. Uh, over how to mess with and manipulate text, words, sentences. Uh, so let's just start off right off with, with go over here and click on to the text tool. Uh, come up here. I like Cooper Black. Two reasons. Number one, it shows up real good on the screen. I'm going to lock in caps for scrolling. Uh, as far as the CNC goes, it doesn't matter, but for scrolling, I would suggest you use capital letters as much as possible. It's just easier to cut out caps than it is um, the smaller letters. You don't have to. If you're good at it, you can cut out both, but uh, especially if you're doing like a sign or something, that's fine, but I'll show you in just a minute what I mean by wanting to use a lot of capital letters. So, well, Let's go ahead and do this. Take it one more step. Okay. Now that we've got that, those three letters, first thing we can do is we can center them up. Very easy. You come up here. Uh, anytime you do anything with the particular object, this toolbars up here will change to correspond with the objects that you've chosen. I'm in text, so it tells me I've got Cooper Black. I can uh, mirror it horizontally. Or vertically, hit Control Z, Control Z, and they both Control Z uh, takes it back one step. So two Control Zs, and I'm back. Uh, go up here, you'll see horizontal alignment. Click on it, and go left, center, right, full justify, force justify. So I want to go center. 
Now, the reason I wanted to do that was to show you all real quick uh, about several things that you can do with the text. You can go up here and you can open up this text box and go over to the text properties and it'll tell you everything that you need to know about the text. Uh, it's uniform fill, no fill, all this kind of mumbo jumbo. I don't ever use this because it's so easy for me just to come over here back to the other side. The second one down is the shape tool. And as soon as I click on this shape tool, several things happen. You'll notice this down arrow, so to speak, and then the side arrow, so to speak, and then these little tiny boxes that highlighted by each letter. This is a quick way of being able to uh, adjust the letters. For instance, if I go to this one right here, you notice this comes into a positive. I can pull down on this, and it'll give me more distance, or it'll give me less distance. I can squash them up right together. So that right there in itself pretty well closed the gap from making this a solid word, word art without too much trouble. Uh, this one over here, now that does line spacing. This actually does kerning, I believe is the way you say it. And kerning is the uh, spacing in between letters. So if I grab all of this, I can stretch them out. Or I can bring them in real tight. And pretty much... That right there is all it takes to make that a solid block of letters that I could cut out on a scroll saw and hang on a wall. Just that easy. So uh, let's go back. And uh, we will, we don't need, I don't want to talk about these right here. Let's go back to the Russell and show me what you, I'll show you what you can do with this real quick. So we'll go back to the Russell. Now, you can also, once I bring this, turn this in real close, or as close as I can get it, you'll notice as I start to bring it in, the R, even though the L is good, it's, it's pretty tied up there. The E is good. The S left a little gap right there. If I wanted to make this into one solid block of letters again that I could cut out on the scroll saw, the R is too far away. Well, what you can do is you can go in here, and if you're just still in the shape tool up here, just click on this little block. Use your arrow key. You got up, down, left, right arrow keys. I'm using my right arrow key, and now I can bring this in and snug it right in. I can come over here, click on this little block, bring this S, snug it right in, snug this in. And go back to R. I can snug this in. Because what I want to do is I want these as solid together as possible. And when I'm going to cut these out, if I'm going to make them in one block of letters. So now I've just been able to do that. Now, you can do other things. You can click on this little block. You can move this S up, the E up here. And as far as uh, Corel is concerned, this is still one group, one block. It treats it as an object. Even though I've moved things around, it's still one object as far as Corel Draw is concerned. So uh, you can move them around like that. But now that I've got it like this, now, here for uh, kind of lies the problem is if I change, I, I like using, I don't like using a lot of ink. So therefore, I can change these to a lighter color gray. So when I print my pattern, I don't have to use so much ink. And I can outline them with a red outline, which is for me and my eyes better to see when I'm cutting out. But you'll notice now that brings out the fact that these are individual. They are not grouped or locked in actually together. If you just want to cut them out gray uh, without an outline, you don't have to go any farther. You can print this right now. But if you want it to be one continuous block of letters, Sorry, I'm not doing that. My mouse is doing that. I'm like, whoa, dude, slow down. Um, what we need to do is change a couple of things. Uh, let's see if I can rem uh, First off, we want to go to range, and we want to break artistic text, Cooper Black Normal, apart. Now, this is actually made each one of these letters individual objects. 
that I need to go in here and tell it to convert it to curves. Now once I've done that, you'll notice that this brought this box up here, which I can tell it to weld. Now this has become one solid block of letters and we can confirm that by turning on the lines and you will see that they have all joined and become one. You don't see those lines that we were seeing in there before. And you'll say, well, that's really great. Yeah, you can hang this on the wall, do whatever you want to it, or you can do this. Come over here, take the ellipse tool. If I hold down control, I can make a circle. I told you I was going to go real fast here tonight. Come down here to... Uh, it says drop shadow, but if you click on the box, you have drop shadow, contour, blend, distort, and envelope, and extrude. I want contour. What I'm going to do is put an exact line inside this circle, and I'll ramp this on up to 0.25 of an inch, which 0.25 of an inch is a quarter of an inch. So now this is a quarter of an inch inside this outside line. Come up here to arrange, break contour group apart, go over to my pick tool, select the inner ring, hold down my shift key, select the outer ring, fill it back minus front, and now I've just created a circle with nothing in the middle. Bring this over. Wash it down a little bit so it'll go in here really nice. Hold down the shift key. Select that. Come up here. Now I've got all these. I want to go to weld. And boom, I have a keychain key right now. Mm -hmm. Just made myself, myself a keychain. Now naturally, you can that. do what? Or me. Yeah. <laughs> That's actually that cool. big, I could have brought it in a lot small or closed that hole in, but it represents that. That's now you have a keychain. And that's or you made yourself Irish and O Russell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if you know, if you can do these simple steps that I just showed you, and those, of it, but the great thing about this is being recorded on YouTube, so you can go back and watch this if you missed those steps. Um, you can make keychains. Anybody's name wouldn't be that hard to uh, hard to do at all. Just follow those simple steps. So now we just made a keychain. Uh, see what was the other thing I wanted to talk about? Um, let's go back to um, kind of my mind's drawing a blank right here right now. Let's go back to, let's say we wanted to make a, a sign like we did the other day. Remember I made the square like this, come straight up here to the top, change over to my pick tool, change the scallop corner. As long as this little lock is in place, I can ramp these up, or I can just come in here and type 0 .75. 75 is 3 quarters of an inch. So now let's scallop every one of these corners at three quarters of an inch. Now, I'm saying this so that you will understand I just created that. So any that is in uh, what's on the first layer is this here. This has now become the second layer or one step up above. So anything I create now is going to be uh, above this. If I had created the text first, it would have been below this, so I had to uh, bring one or the other up a level. But that being said, come over here. Now I've got, uh, oh, let's do this. I've got a lot of people that's asked me how to do the um, put text on a path. So I'm going to hold down control. Now what I'm doing is when you create, uh, select the ellipse tool, if I do it like that, it's an ellipse. Okay? If I draw it like that, if you will come up here, it will tell me the size right in this area right here. Here's my X and Y coordinates, but it's also 14.917 by 12.75 inches. Well, that's not a perfect circle. 
but if I hold down my control key and pull it, you will notice over there that it's become now a perfect circle. It's 10.167 by 10.167. So hold down your control key and you'll make a perfect circle. So now that I've got the circle, let's go in here and put in, let's say I want to make a sign that says, We'll go back to the Russ Buzz here. Grab this out. That's another thing. If you grab these corner, you can stretch this out this way. Or you can stretch this up this way. But you notice how it uh, elongates the letters. They're not symmetrical, so to speak. But if you go to the corners, for your ear, or it will actually drag it out symmetrical. So, now we want to put this rust was here on this um, on this path of the circle. All right, how come it's not doing this? Oh, there we go. So what I want to do is select the select the letters. Come up here to text. Come down to fit text. To path. And then now, as very plainly, bring it here. If you'll notice that the red line popped up, that's to appear to show to show me that that's where the letters will stop, but it's not quite centered. If you'll notice I moved over a little bit, that red line appeared in the middle of all the letters. That red line tells me now that that text is now centered on the top part of that circle. So boom, there it is. But now, by doing that, I've combined the two. So what I have to do is, because I can move it out here, but it's still always going to be attached to that circle, if you'll notice. I would just drag the circle on, or if I move the circle, it moves the text. So what I want to do is break these two apart real easy. Go over here to Arrange. Uh, oh, is it Arrange or Text? Hold on. Get it all here. Arrange. Break. You have to highlight everything in that group. Fill it arranged. Break text apart. And now I've actually separated the text from the circle. Looking for delete. There it is. And now I can scroll this down a little bit. And now I can put it on my sign. I have it in an arc across there. And very easily hit shift back minus front and boom. It just cookie cuttered that out right into my sign. So I can cut that out. Now yes, I have floaters in here that I have to take care of, which I can well, I showed you that last time, which is really not all that hard to do. I'm up here to my pen tool. And, and floaters in scroll saw terminology is uh, who's a scroll sawer that on here that can tell me what that means? Honey, all scroll saw. That's great. Okay, what that means uh, is. If, oh, never mind. Was, come on, no, go ahead. It's the little part in there that's not connected to any piece of the rest of the wood that is going to fall out once you cut it out. Exactly. Yeah, I'm, I'm impressed that you knew that, Donald. I hey, I ain't the biggest city in the world. Close. <laughs> no, I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> Unless you're a scroll sawer, most people don't understand what floaters are. And he's right, because right now when I cut this W out, this piece is going to fall out. When I cut this S out, this piece is going to fall out. And when I cut this A out, guess what? The little thing that makes up the center of the A is going to fall out. So no longer is an A, it's more like a triangle. So um, I'm glad I went to this too because now I just popped in what I was trying to say what, what I was going to do earlier. But anyway, so I very simply just drew that in there. I go up here and hit my pick tool, hold down the shift key, select my sign, and hit weld, and boom. Now I just got rid of the floater. Now when I cut this A out, 
this part here is going to remain to hold that little piece up there for the A. It's kind of like stenciling, if you understand. If you make a text, see stencil text, which we can find it down here. Stencil text is actually already set up. And designed with no floaters. So you got a gap in there. You cut this out, this part will stay. Uh, you don't need it in the end. You do need it in the D. You don't need it in the L. So now we're turning this into um, a scrollable text. You can basically take any text and turn it into a scrollable text. Now, this is what I wanted to talk about earlier when we were going over something. Um, if you will notice, this right here, the space between these, uh, the W um, here, and there's a few other places. This is kind of a narrow in here. Sometimes if you're not real good at scrolling, these can become hazardous. This will break off really early, or really easily, I should say. So... Uh, there is a way to correct this even right now and how you can do that is if you come over here back to your shape tool and you click on the sign we're back to the nodes and line segments you can see all these nodes all throughout here and here's the line segments now let me show you something that's really uh, I've done this so absolutely so much that um, I can pretty well tell whenever I need to do this that some of the letters they I can look at them and just say wow that's really 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 close and I'm gonna have a real hard time if I uh, try to cut this out maintaining that pieces integrity so that it won't fall out so very easy just come in here and I can grab this little group of nodes right here I'm going to use my left arrow key left over a little bit maybe come down a little bit Come back into this area. Let's straighten. I can just delete these nodes, and that'll pretty well straighten that area out. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I like it. yeah. If you notice when I get on the line, it changes this little squiggly line that tells me I can. Now you come in here, grab these nodes. Move them over. Ooh, I didn't grab enough nodes. Hold on. Let me back this up. Need to grab more nodes. There we go. I can just delete this node. I'll come in and grab these nodes. Bump, bump, bump. Delete these nodes, and boom. I've now opened that gap up so that it's a lot easier to cut and. Uh, that piece probably won't break or fall out. Same here with the S. I'm going to go up once, up twice, and then over once. Delete those nodes. Down, down, over to the right once, twice. Down, down, over to the right twice. Use should be all right. I can do that on any of these. This H is a real good example. See how close that is? Those are going to be real easy if I'm not careful to break out, especially if I'm doing eighth inch or quarter inch wood. I just come in here, select these nodes, maybe go up once, select these nodes, right, right, maybe down. A little problem here. Delete that node, straight that out. Oop, grab one over there. Left, left. Left, left. Get rid of that one. Right, right.
And now I've just opened the gap up on those, which make it a lot easier when I'm scrolling. So these, at this point, every one of these letters are, are line segments and nodes and are fully, you can edit them in any way, shape, or form you want. Uh, you can even distort them. Whatever you want to do. So, but that's a little secret. If you've done it as long as I have, you will know that sometimes these little areas in between the W, the H, uh, will break off real, real easy. So it's easier to come in here. For instance, on this E, this is real tight. If I'm really kind of worried about this, select them. Right. Left, left, left arrow. That looks a little too out of the way. Just tell it delete and smooths it right out. There you go. Then you can put anything else you want in there. So that was just real quick on how to do that. And then you can come in here and fill in some other stuff if you want to. I messed that up. <laughs> and come back up here to horizontal alignment, center. Go over here and get my shape tool. That is messed up. But Dave wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Hit shift, weld, Oop. Oh, I'm supposed to be back minus front, back minus front. There you go. Made me a nice little sign to cut out. Okay. Now, can you take this image right now and send it over to your CNC machine? Yes, I could. That's cool. I sure could. I wouldn't need to do this in the letters. Uh, uh, I need to do this for the scroll saw, but not for the CNC machine. The CNC machine. Now, if I wanted the CNC machine to cut it out, I would have to do this. But if I was just going to engrave this or carve this out, I would not need to worry about the floaters. You only have to worry about the floaters is when you are doing scroll saw work. But I have learned uh, that I can fully capable take this sign right now, click on it, go over here, file. Export. Come down here to DXF, and boom. Matter of fact, uh, let's go to CNC, and these are all Corel Draw DXFs that I have made since I have had my machine. Sweet. Yep. Then I import them straight into. Uh, 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 VCar Pro, or I, I, and yeah, do its little, let us do its little thing, and over to G code. All right. So that's just another way of being able to manipulate text. Uh, back to real quick, so that uh, I don't forget this. But back when we were doing this. Um, No, y'all are getting tired of me doing my own name, so I'll trip, change over to somebody <laughs> else's. Put blogs in five. Uh, yeah. I can't no, we that. don't want to. We <laughs> not why, you, why you got to implicate me in this situation? <laughs> but fix, fix text to path, back to Donald, select it, fix text to path. Now, if you'll notice, if I bring it in here, it can put it in the inside of the circle. And it'll even make it smaller. That's wherever you want it, and it'll definitely put it right there. That's where I want it. Hmm. But now, if you want it on the bottom, oop, forgot to do the text, fit text path. You will notice on the bottom that it puts it like that. So what you have to do is do a little trick here. You have to select that. Um, okay, why isn't it doing it?
I think I messed up. I'm going to go back one, one step. All right, Cooper Black. Do 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 do. Fit the text to path. Bring it to the bottom. All right, I don't understand why it's doing this to me. It's doing it. I should be able to mirror this. I apparently don't like bottom. There yeah, you go. Know. You don't like being on the bottom. <laughs> you don't like being on the bottom. <laughs> you may rush this computer crash. <laughs> no, I didn't make it pat crash. I should be able to flip this, and it's not allowing me to do it, and I'm not sure why at this moment. It's the old do anything live. Mm -hmm. Oh, here we go. Mirror it vertically, mirror horizontally. There you go. Admit it, Donald don't work. <laughs> okay. You tell you that. But you can do that. Um, and there was a way, and I'll... I don't know. Like I said, sometimes when you do things live, for some reason, they don't work out. Even though I've done this probably hundreds of times. Okay, text. It takes a path. Not that one, this one. Thank you very much. See, I should be able to. There should be a thing up here telling me that I can flip it. Oh, there it is. Jeez. There. Hmm. So it brought it inside. Now I can bring it to the outside. That's what I missed. Now I can bring it to the outside. And what it is is go back. I was looking at the wrong. This is the mirror text vertically and the mirror text horizontally. I was looking for the other little blocks that tell me to mirror things horizontally and vertically and forgot all about it. Changes over when it goes to text. But you mirror it vertically or you mirror it horizontally and then mirror it vertically. And you can bring it to the outside. There you have it. Yeah, I did the, the same thing uh, uh, with uh, Inkscape. I finally learned how to do the fit the text on the path. Yep. And uh, but it doesn't go where I think it should go, and I haven't figured out how to make it move where I want it to go. Oh, really? And uh, this is uh, even even more intuitive than than what the Inkscape version is. Now, remember, once we've done that and break that text apart from the circle. It's still an object, a piece of text, and still conforms to, if I go up here and hit on my shape tool, um, tell it to shape, I can still widen this on out. But it gets these funky little twists and turns in it. You actually would have to come in here now and try to straighten this up. Either one, each one of them individually. Yeah, each one of them individually. It does a well, real good I've never been straight in my life. Well, I mean, I'm straight. <laughs> never mind. Hey. Oh, you know, he burned it. <laughs> okay. I think he came out of the closet. So now we've got that done. Let's put Donald over here in the corner. <laughs> that did not come out quite the way I was planning on it. I'm just saying. <laughs> so let's go back and let's create another ellipse. Now, in order to get it perfectly round, we, what do we do? And hold down control and drag. Now, remember, this is a solid object. I can represent this by changing the color. You can see it's full. Even though that I have the, f it's clear, and I can make the outline clear, it's still there, even though it's invisible. So we make the outline black. We'll come in here and make this. Now, what I can do is I can do the same thing, come across over to here to the contour tool, and I want to make it. I just have to bump this up to 26, uh, but I can bring it back down to 25. Now that just made that interior line is exactly one quarter of an inch um, from the inside of that exterior line. I can make it to the outside, and it'll make it a quarter inch to the outside. Either way, it doesn't matter, but 0.25 means 25 of an inch, which is I can make it a half an inch. Matter of fact, we'll go ahead and make it a half an inch. Make it a little bit thicker. 
So that is exactly one half of an inch from the outside. This circle is exactly uh, 12 or 16.042. So if I want to make it 16 inches by 16 inches. So this circle on the inside is 15 and 3 quarters of an inch. So now what I'm going to do is highlight the interior circle. Or take that back. I want to grab a hold of the whole thing, go over here to arrange, break contour group apart. Now, if we fill this thing in, you'll see all this is is a circle laying upon a circle now. So what I want to do is grab the interior circle, hold down the shift, come over here, grab the exterior circle until it back minus front. Now I have a hole or a circle uh, with a hole in it to be able to put things in. And the reason I do that is, uh, let's pick a short name. Uh, uh, let's do Chris because it's a real short name. So we'll come in here and do Chris. My buddy Chris ain't here tonight, so this is for you, my friend. We'll come in here and do Chris. Now what I want to do at this point is I want to try to get this as close as possible to these lines, uh, touching them, but yet not quite going over into them. That looks pretty good right there. We can deal with that. Now, keeping the text highlighted, come back over here to the sidebar. Remember, we've been playing with the contour tool, but there's drop shadow, contour, blend, distort, envelope, and extrude. We're going to go over to the envelope tool which brings up the envelope toolbar. You can do, as an envelope tool, you can do, uh, this is a double art mode, which will change it into the double art mode. So if I pull the center, it makes this as a double arc. If I pull this as a single art mode, notice it just makes it round. Uh, I can change it to a straight line mode, or I can go over here and change it to unconstrained mode. So what I'm going to want to do is come in here in the unconstrained mode, and I want to bring these. I want the I need to get these letters just in the black letters just inside over that into that gray all the way around. Come on, get all over here. All the way around. This is not acting like it's in the unconstrained mode. All right, let's do this. You can come out here to the handles and pull it. These little handles will pull these line segments in the direction. Here's a handle here, so if I pull it up here, See what it does? I want to get these up into the gray all the way around. They got to be over, not just touching, they literally have to be kind of like over into the gray. Now you don't want them all the way over, and I'll explain that in just a second, but you want them into the gray enough. And then we come down here to the bottom. Oh, I know what it is. I want to change this. If this is in probably the smooth, symmetrical or the smooth node, I can change these to cusp node, which they will only respond. Um, see what it just did? Respond like that. So, ah. Put it back down to this. Bring it in there. I'm going to change this one. Oh, it won't let me. All right. Be that way. You're wondering, you're wondering what I'm doing. Does anybody have any idea what I'm trying to do at this point? Make like another keychain? I like it. Close, but no cigar. Making an earring. Uh, an earring? Close, but no cigar. <laughs> Donald's nose ring. <laughs> 
No, all right. I don't know, but you you notice every time it, it, you use one of our names, we even mess with you in the text. Mm. <laughs> all right. So now that I've got this, watch what I'm going to do. I hit go back to my pick tool. Hit this. Come over here up the top to remember all these. Create boundary, back minus front, front minus back. I'm going to come over here to weld. Okay. Anybody have any idea what this is? Where I'm going with this? Come over here to the con. Belt buckle. We're making a circle. Huh? Belt buckle. <laughs> what? We're making another belt buckle. Is it no. a belt buckle or a Christmas tree? A Christmas tree ornament. I'll tell this to great contour group apart. I'm a redneck. A Christmas tree ornament, belt buckle, same difference. Uh, back minus front. Bring this down. Hit my shift key, select this, hit weld, and boom. Now I have a named Christmas tree ornament. <laughs> Pretty neat. Cut, cut that out with anybody, all your family's name, and hang them on the Christmas tree. So since I guessed it right, do I win a bass boat now? <laughs> <laughs> now, 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 right. now, now do an ornament like that with my mama's name, Willa Dean. <laughs> it's, in the mail. it's in the mail like the check, Donald. <laughs> I mean, no. <laughs> all right. So there we have it. Uh, we're walking down to about 10 minutes left. That's all the things you can do with, uh, or some of the things you can do with text. Uh, just you're not limited to. You can make an o uh, kind of an oval Christmas tree ornament if you want. Um, real. Once you learn how to do this. Contour. Select this, arrange, break contour group apart. Come in here, grab the inner circle, hold down the shift key, go to the outer circle. Oop, I didn't do something right. Inner circle, hold on the shift key, go to the outer circle and tell it back minus front. We get Shelly. In here, then come over here, change it from contour down to envelope. Pull these around. They have to be into not just touching or make it work right bring these down a little bit more oh come on and then click hit the shift key and hit weld and boom Oh, sweet. I like it. I like it. <laughs> so there you go. Well, you can make uh, all, there's all kind of different things you can do with these. You can make, um, take, um, add another circle to it. Hold down the shift key. Weld. Uh, oh, before I want to do that, hit Control D to duplicate. Well, let's spin this around and let 
make it a lot longer. Now we'll take this one, hold down the shift key for that, tell it to weld, hold down the shift key on this one to that one, tell it to weld, and boom. A little bit longer than what I wanted. Hood ornament. No, that was like a, a, a prison sheet. A prison sheet? Yeah, it was nice. Shiny. 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 Yeah, so you know what they are, huh? There you go. That's what I was looking on. See how that's becoming one of those ornaments? Cool. Uh, I like it. Just really quick. And then naturally you got to have your wolf. Here, let's do this as an ellipse, too. Get this little lined up a little bit better. Come on, get over there, get over there, get over there. Mess with me, I'll poke you with my ornament. <laughs> <laughs> well, now let's come in here with a little... And then tell it... Contour. Break contour group apart. Shift, back minus front, oop, I moved, wanted over there, actually it needs to be a little smaller, shift, Oil and boom. Have the Shelly's ornament. I, I feel like I want to go all gangster and put a chain around it, wear it around my neck. <laughs> <Shelly>. <laughs> but you can do the sky's the limit from making <laughs> keychains very easily. Oh, real quick, yeah, you could be you could do uh, how how many more minutes? Six more minutes? Six. Yeah. All right. Let's do this real quick. Uh, go back to contour. Okay. Now, this is going to be done real quick, guys. So, range, break contour group apart. Come in here, shift. I uh, need to do back minus front. Yep, that should make that like that. Okay, so now we can come in here and type in. Should have done that more. On the shift key. Of the weld, and then we can put another little thing on. I'm just not going to do the contour thing, everything. You get my point. That's another copy keychain you can make. Make this outside thing fi fatter, and then now you can cut this out, and this is all holding the letters together. That's cool. another copy keychain. I like them. That you can make. I didn't put a little hole in here, but y'all understand I was kind of limited. I wanted to get this done real quick. Make Naturally make this a lot fatter on the outside, so it's a lot thicker. Still that little fine line that I've got around there, but that's another kind of cheap keychain you could make. So you can make one of the letters like... The one, the problem with the letters like this, and I've made them before for my family, is because of this being a U, and you see where the weaknesses is, mm -hmm. I usually have a tendency to break. 
So making them like this makes them much, even with that little thin line around them, makes them much, much stronger, and they don't <laughs> break. So that's the only difference. So stop sharing. Oh, y'all, I can't see you. <laughs> there we have it. Well, you had me whenever you showed me how to do the corners on the box, man. That's all I needed to see. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot do that in Inkscape for, for nothing. I've been trying since I've had it, and I can't get it to look right. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's so um, easy. Uh, Inkscape, I don't, I'm not going to down the program because it's very powerful and very wonderful. It's just that Corel Draw to me has got to be hands down as far as it's more easier to use, more simplistic. Uh, it does have a lot more features. Um, it, to me, it's worth it because at one time, I mean, I was producing, I mean, I was on a computer. I would get up at 5 o'clock in the morning, be on the computer to 8 o'clock, and go into the shop and cut patterns all day from what I'd made from five to eight, especially around Christmas time. I was making Christmas ornaments, those, those little round ornaments, those sell like hot cakes because mm -hmm. you can put them on the tree with everybody's name on them. Uh, and I've got other designs. I've got like a Christmas bell that I've done. Uh, Steve Good does the Christmas bells also. Um, but there's so many designs that around Christmas time I was getting, you know, anywhere between 30, 40, 50 orders. Wow. And I was selling them for like five bucks a piece, and it would take me about two or three minutes because I had the stencils already made. All I had to do is just plug the names in them real quick and go out there and start cutting them. I could sell them for five, five bucks a piece and make them, and probably I could probably do one every ten minutes. <laughs> so, good money. Yep. And, and now that five bucks a piece was only to people that I knew, customers and stuff that I'd been doing dealing with every year. Now, if you wanted them like you were a brand new customer and wanted a set, I was charging anywhere around eight dollars a piece. But like if I had customers that I've been doing for a year and they had a new family member, like a new daughter, new son, they'd just order one. I'd for five bucks, I'd make it for them. So that's good. So, a lot of people like this. Um, a lot of people in the chat area were saying they're going to rewatch the show. Um, that's been a lot of the chatter tonight that they're going to rewatch. This is really good information. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think I would, you would have Al Forte say so he's going to go and get the program now. Yep. I love oh, and by the, what Mark would say before y'all leave, make sure you hit the thumbs up. <laughs> yeah. Make sure you hit me a thumbs up down there and like my. My, my show tonight. We can do more of these. I don't want to get into, I mean, I did one last week. We're going to try to get into some woodworking next week. But we can do more of these later on. I'll, I'll get into more stuff. Uh, somebody wanted to know how to manipulate a picture to be able to cut a picture. I can get into that. There was not. I didn't have enough time this week to prepare for. I haven't done a photograph in a long time, so it, I'm going to have to go back and refresh my memory. Some of this stuff I... Don't, I don't make Christmas ornaments every day, but I made so many of them. It's like riding a bicycle. I remember how to make them, so they're not hard to make. I would like to show off one thing, though, that I made this week on my CNC, and that is it's my <laughs> Simply Wooden Creations Time to Make Some Sawdust Clock. Nice. I like yes. that. Now nice. people can literally say they saw a clock. Yep. Ah. <laughs> but it's my uh, Simply Wooden Creations time to make some sawdust. And I'm going to be selling these. I haven't come up with a price yet, but I'm going to be selling these. I would sell them at a good price. Those, those look pretty good. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. mind buying one That's if you nice. put my emblem on it. Yeah. You can put anybody's emblem on it. That looks good. Actually, I could put, yeah, I could put anybody's emblem on it. That looks good. I might but, talk to you about that. That's good. And then... Um, a couple of other things, just real quick. I want to brag. I want to brag. Go for it. Um, I think a lot of people saw this. Yeah, that's beautiful. Oh, I didn't see that. Wow, it is nice. Did you hand carve that? No, they come off the yeah. CNC. Yeah, yeah, you hand carved it. <laughs> it looks good. <laughs> yeah, they come off the CNC. <laughs> it looks real good. All he used was sandpaper on there. That's it. Nothing else. <laughs> yep. And then my other one is. 
thought that was me and glitter. Wow. That's cool. That's cool. That looks like a book cover. Is that painted? No, yeah. that's CNC. I mean, well, it's painted colored. In, this is paint and paint inside. Yeah. Looks good. Looks professional. Thank you. <laughs> that's what I'm looking for. And then right, the yeah. other ones that I made that I sh made but are behind me. Yeah. Yeah, I like the mom's kitchen. That looks good. Yes. Some of the stuff I've been playing around with. So, guys, thank you all over there. Al Fort, uh, Forte, I should say, Moon Pie Creations. Um, I don't know who Donna Presley's been over there. Who else has been over there? Uh, Moon Pie. Um, yeah. Chris, uh, Chris Glitzos. Uh, there was a few up there earlier. It would take me forever to scroll over. All right. Well, guys, thank you all for being over there and watching and continuing to watch. Everybody's bailing on me because they're going over to the Let's Call or CNC with Dave show, so they're all bailing on us. So let's go ahead and shut down and get out of here. Okay. And just remember, if your women don't find you handsome, at least let them find you handy. <laughs> just give me sawdust, lots of sawdust. All around me and everywhere, I like it flying all around my shop and even in my beard and hair. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs> and God bless. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.